let's use this example for explaining DFS uh, this is a B we will use a directed graph but this doesn't mean that you know DFS is good for directed and sorry DFS is good for directed and BFS is good for undirected uh, you know either algorithm can be used for directed and indirected we just happen to use a directed graph as an example for BFS and this is gonna be C uh, D and okay and this is E mm. okay and this and we have another vertex and this and we'll have two edges in both directions okay so we'll call this a b c d e f g h okay and these are all the edges that we have okay so now the way we will be presenting DFS here is different from the way we presented BFS so in BFS we were given a graph and the source and the problem was finding the vertices that are reachable from the source and finding the minimum distance for each vertex here we're not given a source we will be uh, trying or we will be uh, we will first use uh, we'll first find a source or pick a source at random pick one source at random and then we will do a DFS from that source and then when we are done if all vertices have been visited we are done if there are vertices that haven't been visited yet we will pick another source and we will start another DFS to cover the remaining vertices so if that second source visits all vertices we are done if it doesn't we will pick a third source and so forth so we will keep picking sources uh, arbitrarily until all vertices have been visited so obviously in, a, in an extreme case if you have a, a totally disconnected graph with no edges like a b C, D. So how many sources will you need here? Four. You will need four sources. Because when you start from A, you will only visit A. You will not visit any other vertices. Then you will pick another source. It could be any one of them. It will only visit itself. So each one of them will only visit itself. Okay, but so more, con more connected graphs will require uh, fewer sources and less connected graphs will require more sources so now let's pick a as our first source now in dfs the each vertex can be in one of three three possible states the first state is undiscovered it's either undiscovered and we will just uh, we will use the uh, the convention in the book uh, to color undiscovered vertices by the white color and discovered but not finished and we will color this with gray and we will have finished and we will color this with black 
So if it's white, it means that it hasn't been discovered yet. If it's gray, it means discovered but not finished yet. What does not finished yet mean? It means that we are still processing the neighbors that are reachable from that vertex, but we haven't finished that, them yet. Finished is that we have finished exploring everything that is reachable from that vertex. So we have completely finished processing everything that is reachable uh, from that vertex. And for each vertex, we are gonna, we're going to keep track of the discovery time and the finish time. So there will be discovery time for each vertex and finish time. Okay, so in the beginning, we're going to say, okay, uh, first we have uh, vertex A, and we will just, we have discovered A at time uh, 1. And, well, initially we will set all the colors to white. So all colors are going to be white, undiscovered. And once we pick this source, the color for this source is going to change to uh, gray. Because now we have discovered it. And we will set the time to 1. Then we will look at the adjacency list. The adjacency list of A will have B and E. So we will pick one of them. And we can pick either one of them. So similar to BFS, there are multiple DFSs, multiple traversal orders. So let's stick to the alphabetical order. So we'll go to B. Now we have discovered B. So now B is discovered. And the time, the discovery time is 2. Then we look into the neighbors of B. We have C and E. Uh, so we'll stick to the alphabetical order and we'll go to C before E. So now this is gray or discovered. And we will set the number, the discovery time, to 3. Then we'll go to D because it's the only neighbor of C. And this is now discovered. And we will set the time to 4. Okay. Now, the only neighbor of D is B. But B is in the gray state. It has been discovered, but it has not been finished yet. So if we go to B again, we will be making a cycle, right? So in fact, our purpose here is not to make a cycle. Our purpose is to, uh, you know, to extract a search tree out of this graph. Uh, so what we will do here is that if all neighbors have been discovered already, we will just backtrack. So this is going to be, uh, you know, the the end the the end of this uh, path in the search, and we will say, okay, now D is finished. Why did I put D? Oh, for discovered. Okay, so let's yeah, let's, let's stay systematic. So it was gray. Then it changed to uh, black. So now D is finished. And we will say that the finishing time is time number 5. So two events have taken place. The discovery of D is event number 4. The finishing of D is event number 5. Okay, And the reason why we finished it, because everything that is reachable from D has been discovered already. But... Since this is an edge to a vertex that is still gray, this indicates a cycle in the graph. So we will say that this is a back edge. This is a back edge. Because it's an edge to a, gra to, to a vertex that is still being explored. And the fact that I have reached D while B is gray, this implies that there is a path from B to D because I haven't finished B yet. The fact that B is gray and hasn't been finished yet means that 
I'm still exploring, I'm still exploring the nodes that are reachable from B. And since I got to D while I'm exploring B, this implies that there exists a path from B to D. So there exists a path from B to D, but now I'm discovering an edge that will take me back to B. So this will necessarily be an edge that closes the cycle. Okay, so this, that's why we label it as a back edge. Now, notice that uh, you know, the back edge is not an absolute uh, property of an edge. It depends on our search order. For example, if we had started our search from D, if the search had started from D instead of A, then this edge would have been uh, a regular DFS edge. It would have been a forward edge, not a backward edge. So this would have been a forward edge and we would have discovered B, then we would have discovered C, then this edge would have been a back edge. So whether an edge is a back edge or a front edge, that's a function of the search order. Being a back edge is not an absolute property of an edge. Okay, so now I go back and I go back to C. So uh, now I look at the neighbors of C. I have already looked at all the neighbors of C, so it's time to finish it. So now it's black and the time for finishing this is time six. Then I go back to B. Did I explore all the neighbors of B? No. Have we explored all the neighbors of B? No, we still haven't explored E. So now I will not finish B. You finish it after you have explored all the nodes that are reachable from it. So you still go to E, and this is now discovered with gray, and the time is seven. Now I look into the neighbors of E. So the neighbors of E are, the only neighbor is D, but D is finished. Now, does this indicate a back edge? So an edge to a node, discovering an edge to a node that has been finished, is that a back edge? No, it's not a back edge. Because it's an, it's a, it's an edge to a node that has been finished, which means that this is finished. It, there is, this node, uh, there is no, uh, indication that uh, there is a path, there is another path from D to E. So the fact that D has been finished, not uh, discovered, but not finished, it means that there is no path or this doesn't tell me that there is a path from D to E. So this is not necessarily a back edge. Okay, so an edge to a discovered vertex is not a back edge. So does that mean that that the distance from A to D is already found to be, to be smaller, so it shouldn't be increasing? Okay, so that's a good question. The answer is forget about distances when you do DFS. Oh. So DFS is, is not for finding distances. It's, you know, if we are interested in finding the, uh, the shortest distance to a vertex, we use BFS, not DFS. So DFS is not good for distances. It's good for analyzing the structure of the graph. Okay, so now this is not a back edge. So now I have explored everything. So I finished this. Now it's black and this is time eight. Then I go back to B. Now I have explored everything that is reachable from B. So now it's time to finish it. And it's now black and the time is nine. Then I go back to the A. Uh, now, by the way, we're not, we're, you know, I always go back to the, uh, to the previous node. So in, in this case, you know, this is, this is consistent with the behavior of the stack. Because, you know, when you were here and when you backtracked, it, you basically popped the D and you returned to the previous node and that was C. So the, the behavior of DFS is consistent with the behavior of the stack. You always go back to the last uh, the last node that you pushed on the stack. Okay, so now I go to A 
and I have explored, well, I haven't yet. I look at E, but E is already finished. Okay, E is already finished. So I don't go there again. So I finish, it's now time to finish A with black and this is 10. So note here that this number 10 is equal to the number of vertices that I have explored multiplied by two because each vertex has two numbers. But now I haven't yet explored all the vertices. So I have to find another source and explore the, uh, the rest of the graph. So suppose that I picked uh, H as the second source. So now this is discovered with time 11. The neighbors of H are G and F. So let's go to F first. So we'll discover F, and this is now gray, and this is time 12. Now what are the neighbors of F? The neighbors of F are A and E, and they are both finished. So we don't go there. So now all the neighbors of F have been finished, so I just go back to H. So I go back to H. Do I finish H? No, because I haven't completed exploring what's, uh, you know, reachable from H. By the way, I, I had to finish this. So this is black at time 13. Then I go here. I'm not done yet. So I go to G. Now G is discovered with at time 14. I look at the neighbors of G. <coughs> now this neighbor is black, is finished. So I don't go there. This neighbor is H is gray. I keep putting D, so it's gray. So now an edge to a, a neighbor that is gray is a back edge. So this is a back edge. Okay, and so I don't go uh, in the DFS, I don't go along the back edge. And I finish this at time 15, and this is black. And I go back to H, and now I finish it at time 16. And this is how DFS works. Now, of course, this is not a unique DFS. Can you think of, or can you identify a, a vertex that if we had used as the first source, would have discovered the entire graph? Is there a vertex here that if we had used as the initial source would have discovered, would have explored the entire graph with one source? H. H, yeah. So if we had been lucky to uh, use or to choose H as the source, we would have been able to explore the whole thing. So the number of sources that you need to explore the graph depends on your choice of sources. It depends on what you choose for a source. Now this leads to the question is, can we pick a source that will lead to discovering the whole graph? Uh, of course not, because we are doing DFS to explore the graph. So we don't know the graph yet. You know, we are, we are doing the DFS to explore the graph and uh, you know, analyze the structure of the graph. So we are doing it to, for the sake of exploring the graph. And uh, yeah, there is no way of uh, telling beforehand unless we have you know done a DFS or something another kind of traversal or another kind of analysis to analyze the graph and usually we are doing DFS to analyze the graph and understand its structure okay uh, <coughs> any questions any questions on DFS <coughs> 